Welcome back to Pixelmon, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode six. And guys, I have something to confess. I have something to admit. I am stupid. As you probably know, the past couple of episodes, I've been selling my Eevees for an extraordinary amount of money, which on paper sounds like a great idea. You know, I'm making a lot of money. I have $200,000 in my bank. I've even been buying other Pokemon too, and I still have that much money. So you might be thinking, Siren, how are you so dumb? No, you're not dumb. You're smart. You're tall. You're handsome. You're rich. Like, what more can you ask for? Well, the problem is that is not true. I am stupid. I've been selling my Eevees while allowing them to still be breedable. I didn't even know that was a thing. But when you look at the GTS, one of the categories is breedable. And as you can see, this at the scorch, the breedable is true. But if we go to, for example, find something, this Caterpie, for example, breedable false, it says, which means that if you buy it, you cannot breed it. And the reason that is so important is because if someone were to buy this Caterpie, like if I were to buy this Caterpie, I wouldn't be able to breed it. And then I wouldn't be able to profit it off of it. And now there's some dude selling Eevees that are HA and non-breedable. So he is selling probably the Eevees that I was selling earlier. Like he's breeding the Eevee that I sold to now sell them himself. So I'm an idiot. I know that I sold one of the Eevees for $200,000, which is a lot. But the reason it sold for so much is because I allow them to continue to be breedable. I hope that made sense. I'm so dumb and I probably lost out on so much money. On a good note though, we do have another egg available. So let's go ahead and check the IVs on that. 95%. That is what we love to see. That is what we love to see. And speaking of 95%, I have another EV in here all the way at box 100. I deleted all of my other EVs because they all stunk. But this one is 94%. This one is 95%. Please be male. Please be male. Please be male. And it is lovely jubbly, as you say. And so now that we have a male and female EV, well, another male and female EV, we can start breeding two of them at a time and start selling double of them that we typically would. Although we now we need to get another Everstone or another Destiny Knot. So give me a second to do that. Oh wait, we already have both. Okay, boom. Bang. And then put that here. Put that there. And now we can put him in here. Boom in there. Boom. One. Done. And now we can go to box two. Put those in there. Boom. Done. Yo, breeding is so sick. How many boxes do you actually get in here? Seven. Eight. You get ten boxes? You can bring ten Pokemon at one time in those things. Things. Holy smokes. Eventually, I'm going to have one of the craziest automated systems, and it's going to be a money-making machine. Also, I listed my Lustrous Orb yesterday for 40k, and it didn't sell, so I'm going to try to sell it for, I don't know, something a lot less. 20,000. Come on. Someone surely is going to buy it for $20,000. Come on. Last episode, we did get our hands on this Zapdos, and we got our Jolteon. So I am living life right now. I'm so happy with the way our Pokemon team is coming together, and I've been keeping an eye out on the GTS as well to find even more Pokemon that we can use. One Pokemon that I'm really thinking about using is an Alakazam, especially if it's a hidden ability Alakazam, because its hidden ability is incredibly good. It makes it so that it's not affected by stealth rocks or spikes or anything like that. It's pretty much as if it's holding heavy duty boots, but then you can put anything else you want on it. It's epic. So like I said, I've been looking at the GTS recently and I found this, a Chansey. And a lot of you guys are probably like, what? Chansey? That Pokemon stinks. It does stink in a lot of ways, but it's also incredibly strong in a lot of ways. And it's going for $80,000. It's a perfect BP Chansey. The only thing wrong with it is that it doesn't have that natural cure ability. It has Serene Grace, which maybe is not the best for it, but it's still pretty decent. Serene Grace is a pretty good move. What it does is it doubles the chance of the secondary effect of a move of ha for happening. So for example, if you use a move like Ice Beam, it has a 10% chance to freeze. If your Pokemon has Serene Grace, it then has a 20% chance to freeze. And the reason that's actually pretty decent on a Chansey is because it learns the move Body Slam, which has a 30% chance to paralyze the opponent. But with Serene Grace, it'll have a 60% chance to paralyze the opponent. And to me, that's actually pretty sick. It's not as good as Natural Cure for Chansey, but it still is pretty solid. So I don't know if I'm ever going to be using this Chansey. Like, I don't know if it's going to make my number one party of six when eventually we do end up going to the war zone. But it's really good, I think, to have backup Pokemon. That is why we have that perfect Caterpie in there. That is now why we have... There's no way I just one-shot that. That's annoying. I really wanted to catch that thing. I don't think I have a Jigglypuff yet. But yes, having backups for the war zone is definitely really important. I have learned that the hard way over the years because I'm going to just break the news to you guys. I will be losing in the war zone. Will I be winning? Probably. I'll probably be winning, but I'm also most likely going to be losing. And when I lose, we are going to be losing Pokemon that we love and that we cherish. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard on our heart. It's going to be hard on our soul. But the most important thing is that we have backups to make sure that we can go right back in there and steal our 
our Pokemon back from the people that steal it from us. Oh, I also got this Issy Hourglass. I'm pretty sure it just expedites the... How does this work, actually? Oh, look at that! It completes the breeding process in like one second or instantly. Okay, so let's take this back and let's check the IVs on that. 88%. None of these guys have good defense. Like, that is their biggest problem. But whatever, we'll start breeding these guys again. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's rename him to 88 IVs. Boom. And I'm making box 100 my Eevee box. So I'm just going to stuff all my Eevees in there that don't really make the cut. Or the ones that I'm planning on selling. I don't really know. I'll just shove them all in there. I'll probably sell them all later, though. Anyway, today's objective, ladies and gentlemen, is to go hunting for a Dratini. I know that we got one already when we redeemed our specific Pokemon. But here's the thing. If somehow, some way, we can start breeding Dratinis that are very good IVs and pretty much battle perfect, that is how we will become the absolute strongest and richest and handsomest people and handsomest player on the server. That That is a fact. Especially if we can get a hidden ability one. Because hidden ability Dragonite might be the most overpowered Pokemon in all of Generation 1. Now the chances of getting a hidden ability Dratini is nearly impossible. So I don't think I'm going to do it in today's episode. But if I can at least get a Dratini that is pretty good IVs, then we can start breeding it and we can start training them to become very strong Dratinis at least. I will be able to sell those for a decent bit of money. So the first thing I have to do is find an ocean biome because that is where these bad boys spawn. All right, here we are. This is Arbus's worst nightmare. If you didn't know, for whatever reason, he is scared of the ocean. I don't really understand why. Oh, there's a Magikarp down there. Maybe I'll catch Magikarps too, actually. Okay, I, I, I guess I'll try to catch Magikarps as well. The thing is, while I'm trying to find myself a Dratini, I may as well catch other Pokemon too, especially ones that have a chance of being hidden ability. Like a hidden ability Magikarp is worth a tremendous amount of money. So I may as well catch other Pokemon while I'm down here, especially easy ones to catch like Magikarp. I may as well. I feel like Magikarp is going to be the EV 2.0. I'm going to find one that has like insanely good IVs and then I'm going to breed it and make an absolute butt ton of money from it. Also, I don't know why I got reminded of this, but I totally forgot that gyms were a thing on the server and I could probably take out at least the first gym relatively soon. I mean, we have a perfect uh, Jolteon, which is obviously incredibly strong, especially for the first gym. Like you'd think that a perfect BP Pokemon should be able to take out a gym essentially on its own, but I don't know. So later on in this episode, we might just try to take out the first gym. It is a fire type gym, so not the perfect matchup for Eevee, but still I I'm hoping it won't be like too difficult for him either. We may have to train up some of our other BP Pokemon as well though, like the Caterpie and the Chansey if we want to give it a run, because I'm fairly sure that the gyms still are incredibly strong. I think that the first three gyms actually got nerfed recently, um, so they should be a little bit easier than they used to be, but I'm fairly sure this, that they're still going to be really stinking strong. I said this last episode as well, but I still have yet to find a single shiny Pokemon. Not one. And I want you guys to keep your eyes peeled as well. You, like, look for Pokemon that are shiny. If I miss a shiny Pokemon, please let me know. Actually, don't let me know. That I would almost rather you guys not tell me if I miss a shiny than if you, than if you do see one, because then it would just make me sad. And I don't like being sad. That's not fun. I will make box nine my Magikarp box, and hopefully we can fill that up as we uh, hunt for our Dratinis as well. Ooh! 67% EVs on that Magikarp. 30 in attack. 31 is the max, as you guys know. So, that was not too bad. I didn't check the first three that I caught. I'm gonna be really organized with these Magikarps, because I wasn't with the EVs, and it was really annoying, but what I'm going to do, which is what a lot of people do, is actually nickname them the percentage EV or IVs that they are. I feel like that's a little bit rude. Like, I'm totally just judging them off of how many IVs that they have, and that's how I'm organizing them. Like, for example, um, this one we saw was 67%, so I'm gonna rename it to 67. This way, when I go back and look at them, it's gonna be really easy to just go through. See, that one's 38%. That is trash. So I'm just gonna nickname it 38 and probably delete it later. But I'm gonna keep them all for now just because I do wanna see, like, how many I actually end up catching. Let's see, IVs for 74%. Okay, okay. That is not bad. For catching a random one, 74%. I feel like when I was catching the EVs, I had one. Oh, someone just called an HA. Oh, no, he defeated an HA Flaffy. GG, bro. But when I caught all of those EVs, there was only one that was, like, over 75%. So I will take that. 45%. Trash can. Elbozo. Horrible Magikarp. Terrible Magikarp. Trash, trash, trash. 54%. Also very bad. We're not going to use that. The thing is, though, if any of these Magikarps even have one stat or one IV that is perfect, that is 31, even if the rest of the stats are really bad, I still might breed with it because if you put a Destiny Knot on it, that 31 IV is 
is going to translate into the baby Pokemon that it makes. So low key, the overall percentage of the IVs isn't everything. As long as it has at least one perfect IV, then it's eight, like it's not horrible to breed with it. And this is also a big reason why so many people already have really good Magikarps on the server that they're selling is because they're so common. It's so easy to go and catch a whole bunch of them. And eventually you'll get one that's actually pretty solid or one that's even HA, like someone else already has done on the server. And the reason that nobody has any good Dratinis is because they are extraordinarily rare to find. As you can see, we haven't even found one yet, but we found at least probably 10, 15 Magikarps. Well, first of all, just to find a Dratini is rare, but then to find one that is really good is incredibly rare. And to find one that is incredibly good and hidden ability is nearly impossible. I will say these Quick Balls are making this very quick. No pun intended. I'm pretty sure every single Quick Ball that I've thrown has caught on the first try. So I highly recommend getting yourself some Quick Balls if you are unaware. Quick Balls are more effective the earlier you are in battle. So the very first turn is the best time to use a Quick Ball. And when you're using them against a simpleton Pokemon like a Magikarp, the chances of it catching is incredibly high. Oh, there's a Gyarados that just spawned. Um, do I even bother catching it though? Like really, is there any point? Because the thing is, it's going to take a little bit longer to catch the Gyarados. And realistically, the IVs of the Gyarados are just as likely to be just as good as the IVs of a Magikarp. So I may as well just keep on catching the Magikarps. But it is pretty cool that there's a Gyarados down there. Maybe that'll bring us some good luck. Maybe the best Magikarps will show out for us now that there is a Gyarados roaming the sea. And one thing that I really like about this series, and I hope that you guys appreciate as well, is you do get to see a lot of the grinding that I'm doing. Typically in my other videos, I cut out a lot of it and I just like make them quick cuts really fast. And this is cut down pretty significantly, don't get me wrong. Like a two hour recording will get cut down to like 30 minutes maybe, even for this channel. But I'm showing you guys at least like the, the important stuff of me going and catching like all of these Magikarps just to show you that the grind is real. And the reason I think that's so important is because it really brings us such a deep connection with these Pokemon. Not to get like weird or make it, you know, I'm not trying to say anything like that. I'm just saying, eventually, if we do get ourselves a hidden ability Magikarp or a really good IV Magikarp, or if eventually, God forbid, we use it in the war zone and it, get, and it gets stolen, it's gonna mean a lot more to us than if it's just some random Magikarp that we kind of just found and didn't really make a big deal about ever capturing. If You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm saying. Dude, there's so many Magikarps I almost feel like there's an outbreak going on, but there's not because if there was, it would show up on the top of the screen that there's a Magikarp outbreak. But there's seriously like an insane amount of Magikarps here. I wish I had quick balls for the Eevees. The Eevees took me so long, bro. I mean, I'm glad that I did catch all those Eevees because it ended up making me a lot of money, but it was very, very painstaking to catch all of them. Let me say, let me tell you, I'm pretty sure that the hidden ability rate is much higher in the ultra space dimension. So honestly, I should probably go there if I want to find one, but... I don't know. I'm kind of lazy. And I also don't have any great way to get to the ultra space right now. I know that today's episode is about Dratini and hunting Dratini and getting a really strong Dragonite. That's the plan. But so far, it has been the Magikarp show. It has absolutely been the Magikarp show. We've caught so many Magikarps. I've probably, I've cut so many of them out. You guys have seen me catch so many already. I've probably cut 70% of them out. I'm almost, well, actually, I'm not really almost out of quick balls. Let me check how many of these things I've caught though after this one. I still don't think I've missed a single quick Quick ball though. Like they are nailing it every single time. It's pretty much 100% guarantee that you catch a Magikarp first try. Look at this. Look at all these Magikarps I've caught. I actually thought it was going to be more. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go through them though and see if any have good IVs. No. 21%. Oh my god. Ooh, 77%. I'll take a 77%. That one's not bad. All right. Believe it or not, guys, we still don't have a Magikarp that is really good. They all kind of still stink. All right, well, back to catching even more, I guess. Ah, wow. I did not know, but there's a V shop that is like your voting points. I guess you get a point every time you vote. And I just bought a super rod from it. So I didn't know this, but apparently Dratini is a Pokemon that you have to fish for. Well, you don't have to fish for it. It also does spawn in the ocean naturally. But from what I'm seeing, it only spawns in the ocean at dusk or dawn, which is very uh, obnoxious because that's not too many times throughout the day. But uh, if you have 
have a good rod, there's an ultra rare chance of fishing it up. But if you have a super rod, which is what we just got, it's only a very rare chance of fishing it up. Um, but you can only fish it at nighttime. So during the day, I guess we'll continue to catch magic carps, which I know you guys are probably tired of me talking about magic carps, but I have a bunch of them now. Um, I have all those, all of those. And uh, we got one that's 83%. And it's a female, so that's pretty good. I think most of them are male. Um, so I'll breed the female with one of these males and um, I'll try to... Oh, wait, actually, that reminds me. Let me let me go check on the Eevees. And we can probably get them breeding right now, actually. There we go. Oh, look at this. Okay, so there's one. Did I just... Okay, slash IVs six. 90%. And still, those stupid defense Eevees or IVs that we're struggling with. Um, we'll just put this here for now, I guess. Get these bad boys back in there. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now we'll get these out. Slash IV six. 90%. Mm, really not that great, actually. Oh, well. We'll put that there. We'll put these guys back in. We need more Destiny Knots now. Um, slash shop. Destiny Knot. 2.5k. Oh, I didn't know that I could just buy these. Let's get a couple of these then. There we go. Let's go. Okay, so now we'll want to get both of these guys out. Let's check their natures. Are either good nature? Jolly. Wait. Oh, that's exactly what we want. Jolly nature. Okay, which one is this? Jolly nature is the female. Hmm. Okay, let's do that. And then we'll do this. Okay, box three. So now we have two Eevees going and Magikarps. And I need help, bro. Help? Are you serious? It's okay. Slash shop is the goat because I can just buy a whole stack of that for $640. Easy peasy. Put the kelp in. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, cool. So in 22 minutes, we'll have three new eggs. That is going to be lit. Oh, there we go. Our first Dratini. Finally. Holy guacamole. You are so annoying to capture or even find. Okay, let me get my Voltorb out though. Hopefully to paralyze this thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Your hitbox is even more annoying than trying to get you to spawn. <sighs> deep breaths here. Deep breaths. All right, our first Dratini. It is a female. I know some Pokemon have have a higher chance of being male than a female. So I don't know if it's more rare to find a female Dratini than male, but I will take it. Oh, oh okay. Okay. I just caught it. 67% IVs. Is it the best ever? No. But for my first one to catch 67%, I mean, considering all of those Magikarps that I caught, for my first Dratini to be 67%, that is decent. That is pretty decent. What did I just get? Oh, a prism scale. I don't even know what that does, but that is cool. I definitely need some Pokemon in my party, though, that can damage these things without killing them, be because I'm very scared right now that that is going to happen. Very nice. Very nice. Round of applause, everyone. Seriously, everyone's doing a great job. Remoraid, not interested in that. Ooh, my fishing levels are going up. I forgot that fishing levels were a thing. Maybe I'll become a master fisherman. I just got a three uh, whichimahoozy. Three um, exclamation points on a Delmize. I don't know why Delmize is three exclamation points. I thought that was going to be like a Dragonite or something. How many exclamation points is a Dragonite if it Delmize is three. I don't know. I haven't fished in Pixelmon in so long. Wishy washy. Yo. Okay. That Pokemon is insanely strong, like legendary tier strong, but it's not Gen 1, so I don't really care about it. Um, Shellos, no. Wait, fishing? Why am I loving fishing so much? I didn't realize that this was so fun. I don't know what makes this fun, but it is. I'm enjoying it. It reminds me of like Animal Crossing fishing. I don't know if you guys have ever played Animal Crossing. That game is lit, though. But let's go. I'm now level three. I'm level. Oh, yo, I'm gonna catch that wishy washy look out, bro. Yo, he's he about to eat my boat. This guy needs to stop circling me. He is terrifying. A gastrodon level 47. Golly. Uh, this thing is a careful nature. Not, not the best nature for a Dragonite, but it is what it is. I don't know if you can do a defensive Dragonite, can you? I've, I've never seen a defensive Dragonite build. I just got a ruby. I don't even want that. But, like, maybe you could do an AV assault vest Dragonite. Is that a thing? Like, what if you have multi scale AV Dragonite? Ooh, Barrascuta. Another Pokemon that's not Gen 1, but a very good one. Well, it's pretty good, depending on if you have a rain team and Swift Swim with it. Another Wishy Washy. I feel like Wishy Washy should not just be one exclamation point. That thing is huge and super strong. Okay, the more that I hunt for these Dratinis, the more that I realize why there's no good ones on the market yet. These things are incredibly hard to find. Level 20 Magikarp. You know what? I'm going to catch it. For some reason, I feel like because I use a Super Rod to find it, maybe it's going to have insane. IVs. Who knows? And it's pretty much a 100% catch rate with a quick ball, so it shouldn't waste too much time. Boom. Easy peasy. These wishy-washies need to chill. 
Oh, they're right. They're spooking me out. They're really spooking me out. They need to just swim away. Go away. Clobopus. I don't know if I've ever seen a clobopus in my life. Was that? Was it shiny? Was it? Am I tripping? No. That thing wasn't shiny. Was it? I don't know. Level 25 Magikarp. How? That doesn't even make sense. Why didn't you evolve? Okay, I'm starting to think that these Magikarps are worse than regular spawning Magikarps because this one's stupid. It could have evolved five levels ago and it didn't. What is wrong with these things? Ooh, I just got an Alpha Shard. If you get six of those, or if you get nine of those, you can craft a blue orb, which is how you get Primal Kyogre. Well, you need to, it's not how you spawn him, but it's how, it's how you convert Kyogre into a Primal form. That is pretty lit. I, that might be worth some money, actually. I could probably sell that for a decent bit. And by the way, whoever on the server decides to be that guy that goes and gets himself a really good Dratini and sell them on the market, kudos to you, bro. Shout out to you. This is proving to be way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, though, part of me is happy that it's this challenging because if it was easy to get a good Dratini, it just wouldn't feel right. Like, it wouldn't feel... I don't know. Like, working hard for these Pokemon is way more satisfying when I actually get them than if they were, like, all really easy to get. Ooh! Another one did just spawn, though. Let's go. Hopefully, this one's male, though, because the other one that we have is female. So, even if it is bad IVs, we can at least still breed them together and guarantee to get at least more of them. Come here, buddy. It's only level 11. That is a shame. Okay. Mm. I used to love Dracini. This whole day has made me like Dracini less and less, though. There we go. And of course... Okay, got him paralyzed. This whole day, though, is making me like Dracini and Dragonite way less. It's really annoying me. <gasps> I just used a park ball at it. This thing better... This better be the greatest Dracini of all time. I just threw a park ball at it, which is pretty much a, a master ball. Okay, I officially hate Dracini. Oh, my God. All right, let's see how good this thing is. Oh, God. At least it is male, though. Okay, let's see. 66%. Wait! Wait, it's 66%, but it has perfect attack and perfect speed. Can I stop dying, please? Wait, that's actually not bad. That is not bad. That is a good start. I can, I can, wait, what is, what is this one? I think if I actually breed these two together, we might be able to get some decent Dratinis from this. This is not the end of the world. Guys, we might have started something crazy. Hold on. Okay, I really got to stop spending so much money on these Destiny Knots and these Everstones. It's really adding up, but I think it's a good investment. I already had two more. What, what am I, why am I doing that? I'm actually stupid. Okay, but let's put that on that that on wait what is the nature careful nature jolly nature let's go i don't know if like these are really rare or if i'm really lucky or i like i don't really know exactly how to react when i get like the right nature that i'm looking for i don't know how rare it actually is but i seem to be getting them pretty often so i'm not i don't know i feel like it's pretty normal at this point okay but we do want a bunch of those by stack boom okay and now bing bonk boom in 22 minutes we will have our first baby dratini egg and in only a couple minutes minutes, we'll have a bunch more eggs. Two Eevees and a Magikarp. Oh my gosh, guys, this is it. This is what we're all, well, this is what we've been waiting for. The Super Pokemon team is coming in hot. Oh, and also, after we do get a really good Magikarp, and I evolve it into a Gyarados, we should theoretically be able to just wipe the first gym, because the first gym is going to be, wait, well, it is fire type. So, I'll have a perfect Jolteon, a Gyarados, and maybe a good Dratini at that point. I'll at least have a Chansey that I can use, too, and I mean, I guess a Butterfree if we end up bringing that into it. My point is, after I get just like one, maybe two more really good Pokemon, the gyms are going to be in trouble. They are, they are going to be in trouble. It's not going to be fun for them because I'm going to come for them and I'm going to come for them hard. Halls. I'm seeing some Mega Stones on the GTS. None that I particularly want. However, it would be nice to get a generation one mega Pokemon. Like, uh, well, there's actually a lot of uh, gen one megas. All the starters, there's Pidgeot, Alakazam, Gengar, uh, Mewtwo, Pinsir, is Pinsir gen one? I don't even know. But yeah, th th there's a bunch. Um, so I, I, I may, well, I, I, I am looking on the GTS a lot for a mega stone for some of those Pokemon. There we go, there's this one completed. Let's put Voltorb away. Bink. Let's check the IVs on that. 81%. <laughs> Trash. I'm just going to delete this one. It's like you can't win them all. You really can't. Let's grab you. Slash IV6. 91%. That's what I'm talking about. That's a lot better. Let's go. So now, if I do slash unbreedable 6, that work? 
How does this work? Slash unbreedable. Aha! I figured it out. So if you do slash unbreedable set and then the party slot, it then this Pokemon now becomes unbreedable. So now if I do slash ETS and I sell goods, select a party member, this one. See, look, the breedable says false. False. So I can now sell this. Um, boom. Let's sell it. We're gonna sell it. Well, it's it's not perfect IVs. It is good nature and it's not HA. Well, let's try to sell it for a hundred thousand dollars, and you can't breed it. I honestly don't think anyone's going to buy it, but I'm gonna list it anyway, just in case. 20 hours for and let's see. Oh, let's get that code. Oh, our magic carps are ready! Yes, dude, let's go. Okay, let's put these EVs back in. Bink, and then grab our magic carps. Come on, please, please, please be good. 72%. 72%. That is not horrible. That is really, it's truly not the worst. If it I really hope it's a male, though, because if it's male, we'll be able to breed that with the female and get even better IVs after that. Let's hatch. It is male. Yes. <laughs> And it should be Jolly Nature. Yes, sir. Okay. We are making huge progress. So now we'll put the Everstone on that. Put the Destiny Knot on that. And now, I don't know if you guys are following. I do apologize if I'm moving too fast for some of you guys. I'm just saying, I'll let you know in case you are unable to follow. This is great news. This is phenomenal news. We are making such amazing strides to so many different Pokemon. We only need, mm, I guess, probably like 15 more minutes for the Dragonites to breed. Or the the Dratinis to breed, I should say. Um, so we'll give that some time. And yeah, I guess I'll... Oh, Slowpoke. Did I catch a Slowpoke yet? I don't know. We may as well. As I look at my Pokedex, low-key guys, we've made some decent progress considering like most of the episodes so far have not been specifically focused at catching generation one Pokemon except for the first episode. This is pretty good. Um, we probably have like 40 Pokemon caught if I had to guess. There's still certainly a lot missing, but there's also we have a lot of Pokemon that we just need to evolve like Bulbasaur. We have to get to Venusaur eventually. Pidgey, we have to get into Pidgeot. We have to get our Beedrill. After we evolve a lot of our Pokemon that we already have, um, our Pokedex is gonna have a lot of progress to it. It really will. I just remembered as well, I do have some votes because it is the next day, so let's open up our vote crates. Hopefully we get some more fusion shards. AV, I'll take an AV. Let's see. Life orb? Okay, we're getting some good battling items, which is nice. I don't even want that. I don't even want... Luxury balls are trash. 500 coins. I can't complain about a free 500 coins. Power weight! That is actually something we need. That is perfect for our chancy because we are... Yeah, because we need to train it in HP EVs. So, well, I guess I'll keep the dust balls too. But yeah, Power Weight's actually really good for training Pokemon and HP EV, so I'll take that. That's not bad. All right, well, while I wait for my Pokemon to breed, I may as well be productive and EV trade my Chansey in HP EVs and also Defense EV. Because the way that you use Chansey is really you just turn him into a brick wall. That is that is the whole objective of Chansey, is so that it's pretty much unkillable. That's what you want it to be on your team. You want it to be able to stall for you. Okay, and just like that, our HPs are done. Okay, and as you can see, Chansey's EV EVs are completely done now. He is at 100%. And so that means it is now time to get Caterpie his EVs and uh, get him up to par with the rest of the gang. So now he's evolving into Metapod. I did just go to the boss tower real quick to get some XP candies. Um, So he'll evolve into Metapod here. And then I still have an XP candy M for him. So he should get into a Butterfree right after this. Maybe? Uh, yes. Okay, there we go. That is the quickest Caterpie to Butterfree I think I've ever seen. Like, that is unbelievable. Uh, but let's go. So now we have our Butterfree, but he still has zero EVs entirely. So, now we will make sure to train him up and get him as strong as he can be. And there we go. Butterfree is now 100% EV trained. That actually doesn't take long at all when you have, like, power lenses and power anklets. Well, any of the power items uh, to get them maximum. It, like, it literally takes two minutes, three minutes, maybe, to get them fully EV trained, which is really nice. Hopefully, our Pokemon are now ready to, or done breeding by now. They're still not. That is how quickly it took me to EV train those Pokemon. Pokemon. That was not bad at all. Now, all I have to do is get them to level 100 and get good items for them. The Chansey, though, I do have an Eevee Light for, which is right here. Let's go. Um, so now I just have to get good moves on them and get them to level 100, and then they're perfect. They're like 100% ready to go. These choice specs are for Jolteon, and then for Butterfree, it looks like people like to put life orbs on them or focus sashes. I actually don't mind the focus sash. What the focus sash does is it makes it so that he can not die in one hit, which is really important for Pokemon like Eevee. Someone just gave me this. I don't want that. I mean, Butterfree. It's really good for Pokemon like Butterfree that die really easily, especially like rock type moves, because what you can do is use Quiver Dance, which boosts your speed, special attack, and special defense. You let the other Pokemon hit you once because that tends to happen, and Butterfree normally dies in one hit. But with the Focus Sash, 
it won't. So now you have a buff speed, special attack, and special defense, and then you can set up like sweeping with it. So Butterfree, I know like it's not really known to be an amazing, amazing Pokemon, but low key, it can be used as a sweeper, which is kind of crazy. So our super box is starting to actually look pretty super. We have an amazing Butterfree, an amazing Chansey, an amazing Jolteon. Unfortunately, Goku isn't really that strong. We've checked its IVs before. I kind of forget. They're 29? Oh, that's its EVs. Oh my gosh, bro. I was about to say, what? Okay, no. Its IVs are 62%, but it has zero IVs in special attack. So the Charizard's essentially useless and unusable. And it has a bad nature too. Like we just, we can't use the Charizard in battle, but it's nice to have. And eventually we're going to fuse it with Vegeta, which I haven't checked its IVs either. Um, It actually has decent IVs. It's not perfect speed, but I'm pretty sure when you fuse Pokemon together, it just takes like the best IVs of the two and then puts them all together. So yeah, the Zekizard that we're eventually going to get should be pretty gosh dang strong. I really need to spend an entire episode working on my house. Maybe not a whole episode working on my house, but a good bit working on my house because I mean, it's embarrassing. It really is. The problem is I love Pixamon too much. Like I just love catching Pokemon, breeding Pokemon, getting stronger Pokemon that like, yes, I do want a better house, but I just don't feel like using a good percentage of the video working on my house when I could be doing things that are more technically productive. All right, guys, the moment of truth is here. Almost all of our eggs are ready. Maybe uh, I just got to refresh it like one more time. Uh, uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, whatever. We're just going to take these. Uh, let's see what the IVs are in this bad boy. 91%. I seem to like, keep on getting 91% on these. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. Um, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not like, I'm not like super ecstatic about it. Let me nickname him 95 and then we'll put him back in. I still have these two as well. Patch five. These are both 90% as well. 90, 90. So I keep getting like, I mean, I don't want to say that they're mid EVs. Like they're definitely good, but they're not like amazing. Anyway, let's get those back in the box. Let's take out this egg. Come on, show me the money. Yeah, 98%. That is what I'm talking about right there. Come on. That is pretty much as good as it gets. I mean, it could use a three more IV points in defense, but my gosh, it doesn't get much better than this EV. Let's go. 98. So now we can sell that thing for probably a good amount of money. Uh, So let's put these two EVs. Yeah, let's put those two EVs back in, get them breeding again. Okay. And now the real fun one, we have another Magikarp egg. Come on, please. Wait, let me actually nickname this one as well. That is 72%. So let's go here. 72. Okay. If it's anything above 80%, I'm going to be really happy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 70. That is really upsetting, actually. I'm very upset about that. Okay. No, that's okay. Listen, we can't win them all. We can't win them all. Sometimes you take L's. Sometimes there are L's. But sometimes there are big W's. I'm just going to leak that egg. I don't want it. But sometimes there are big W's, boys. Th is this a W moment right here where we can breed our two Dratinis together to get a super egg? Oh, it comes in a park ball too. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Okay, but let's check the IVs on these things. I kind of forget. 67 and what was it? It's like 70 something. Oh wait, this one's only 66 as well. So 67 and 66. I kind of forgot like how bad these e these dread teenies were. But to be fair, I've only caught three of them. So it wasn't like, these are these are pretty good actually. So if, if it's above 70, I'm happy. 72, 72% 72 on the Dratini. I will take that. Okay, and it's female. It's 72%. We can now use this as our breed. Dratini. We're making baby steps here, baby steps. It is jolly nature as well because we had the Everstone on. Okay, so let's put that here. And now we breed these two together. Bada bing, bada bop, breed. And there we go. So off camera, guys, I'm going to be continuing to breed all of these Pokemon because it does take a very, very long time. So doing it on camera is a little anticlimactic. We only get to breed like one or two eggs every single episode. So hopefully I get some pretty good Pokemon in between this episode and the next. But anyway, that is going to be it for today. If you guys did enjoy, make sure that you are subscribed and stay tuned for the next episode in the series. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you.